Welcome to this special edition of Kitchen Chat, a taste of luxury, history, and hospitality. I'm your host, Margaret McSweeney, and let's visit the Pierre New York, a Taj Hotel, which has defined luxury and hospitality since 1930. As a frequent guest of the hotel and as a member of Les Dames d'Escoffier, I wanted to learn more about the history of this iconic place. Auguste Escoffier, who is known as the father of all chefs around the world, was the opening chef of the Pierre, and he left a lasting culinary imprint. I had the privilege of speaking with Francois Olivier Luigi, the general manager of the Pierre, in the new in-house museum. It just opened. In addition, I spoke with executive chef, culinary director, Michael Mignano. Both guests provide insightful and heartwarming stories about the luxury, history, and hospitality of the Pierre. It is amazing. It's the first thing I learned when I joined the Pierre is that Escoffier was the opening chef. I mean, that is a remarkable feat, right? So imagine 1930, I think he was in his early 80s at the time. And how did Charles Pierre convince this man to come and work with him? That is the great story, I think. Uh, And yes, so he came and uh, was the opening chef. And uh, he was such a celebrity at the time that we have a collection of menus for private events, banquet that was thrown in his honor at the PI, including his birthday party. Uh, we have that menu. And uh, we're grateful that they actually did take a beautiful group shot with Auguste yeah. Escoffier in the center in the entire kitchen brigade. The fact that we know he designed the original kitchen of the Pierre with Charles Pierre uh, is amazing because if you look at this hotel, um, the kitchen is in the middle of the hotel. And actually, it's double height, and it almost is to it's a basement level and ground floor level, meaning it was considered so important mm. that it's actually the very center of the pier, and the lobby goes around it. Okay. Uh, and of course, it was laid out, we have the original plan correctly, with mm. uh, his famous brigade system, hot cold, confiserie, pastry, chocolaterie. And at the time, it was kind of brand new, the idea when you get food delivered, you would split them. There's a fork in the road in the basement. You have fish meat to the left, vegetable to the right, and the garbage came out the other way. So this was already designed like that in 1930. Very ahead of its time when you think of even kitchen and hotel design today. First of all, I think you should put the date in context, right? 1930, you open a hotel, you have Auguste Escoffier. It's prohibition. <laughs> so yes. one, of these are, one of the quotes we read in the newspaper is Auguste Escoffier saying, it's a long lunch, four hours, when you can't drink anything. <laughs> that when prohibition was repealed, when I was 1933, the first thing people did is ditch the fancy French restaurant. Poor Auguste. For a few years, everything was about dancing and drinking, and all the restaurants of the pier were converted into supper clubs, overnight. And they opened the cotillion room. Duke and Duchess of Windsor came on an official visit, and uh, of course, the Cotillion Room, who, because they said at the pier, created a line of china just for them. As you see, we have a plate there. So when they had their official dinner at the pier, they had the china with their initials. Tell us a little bit about Charles Pierre. Charles Pierre was a Corsican man, which is only interesting because I'm from Corsica. I guess I found that interesting. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> he was French, and um, uh, the story you read in the newspaper of the time is that his family, uh, his father had a hotel in Monte Carlo, mm. and uh, he, as a young man, he did his apprenticeship there, he did sort of every position, and then moved around to eventually end up in London, that's where he met Auguste Escoffier. Mm. And then when he was in London, uh, Louis Chiari, which was the biggest restaurateur at the time, uh, told him to come to New York, work with him in his famous Chiari restaurant in New York. He came, he did, he became more famous than Sherry, opened his own place. <laughs> and then some of his clients, like uh, the Chrysler family and other prominent um, uh, banking and business family, uh, said to Charles, open a hotel. We'll fund it for you. The rooftop of the Pierre was supposed to be a private club called Pierrot, which is mm-hmm. a diminutive for Pierre. Yes. How exciting it was for New York at the time. Yeah. 
it's the Great Depression. But the people who had money through the Depression were Hollywood actors. Right. Well, and they quickly called this new class the Café Society. Mm. And the PI was the very center of Café Society uh, in New York. Uh, great weddings took place here in 1930, 1931. Uh, Henry Fonda got married here. Uh, Coco Chanel had pictures of her coming to New York to show her first line to the US. So, a lot of exciting time, even though it was difficult for the country, but the Pierre persevered and has remained pretty much unchanged in, in basic concept and design since that original vision from Miss Coffier. We have our two ladies of the Pierre, um, Elizabeth Teller and Audrey Hepburn. An interesting story, uh, the Pierre in 1933 uh, John Paul Getty starting, he bought the land and he bought the hotel and he said for a long time the Pierre was his only asset above ground. In 1959 he converted the Pierre, uh, the Pierre Suites into apartment. The first buyer was Elizabeth Taylor with her fourth husband, uh, Eddie Fisher. That alone was story enough, the headlines, but of course their first apartment together after he abandoned Debbie Reynolds' scandal was to move and buy an apartment at the Pierre. Uh, of course, that didn't last very long. She went to shoot a famous movie in Rome, and we know how that ended. He cried a lot, and uh, he cried on the shoulder of Audrey Hepburn, and he says in his memoir she was the only nice, she was the only nice person who, who listened to him and trying to comfort him. Audrey Hepburn stayed at the Pierre uh, her entire career uh, whenever she was in New York. And we have her here with, uh, her, uh, in, of course, in Herbert de Givenchy, a favorite designer for one of the events at the Pierre that was in the 80s. We have a lot of pictures of her here. Um, we have a picture of Auguste's grandson, Pierre, at a ceremony in 1988 when they honored his grandfather and named a room, a beautiful suite at the Pierre after him and unveiled a great portrait. So that took place in 1988. Yes. The, the Pierre was designed to entertain. Mm -hmm. Wonderful entertainment spaces. And today, 93 years later, we can say we have had over a thousand weddings, uh, you know, countless fundraising events, uh, and all in that spirit and caring for that tradition of, of entertaining with a wonderful food. Uh, chef today, Chef Michael Mignano is probably you know, fourth, fifth, sixth executive chef that, you know, with a long tenure to be here at the Pierre. There's a lot of uh, consistency, a lot of tenure in the people who take the helm here and great pride. And they all have that Escoffier cookbook on their desk. It was a pleasure to sit down with executive chef, culinary director, Michael Mignano in the 2E bar lounge at the Pierre and discuss luxury, history, and hospitality. Escoffier is the unofficial father yes. of cuisine, especially French cooking. Yes. And, you know, I, when I started cooking, you uh, work in a traditional brigade system, mm -hmm. stagiaire, and you start from nothing, from just literally peeling potatoes and apples. Yes. Pay attention, you get yelled at enough, you <laughs> listen, and then uh, people always say, you're such a good chef, and I said, well, I burned a lot of cookies. Right? Uh, yeah. Right? It, it takes a lot, so people don't really understand what it takes to get where it is. And there's a lot of hard work, no dedication, yes. patience, perseverance, and you have to love this. Mm. So I would think that Escoffier, being the father of the, the chefs in the world, it's uh, set the benchmark and stage for the whole culinary society. Absolutely, and also the French cuisine here in New York. I, I know there was just the, the tradition, and that's so important, the tradition, but also it's important to have that progressive approach, uh, keeping it modern, keeping French cuisine you relevant. How do you do that? So I'm in the business of sophisticated fun. Uh, I love that, right? sophisticated fun. fun. Okay, so <laughs> everything we do is, you know, we have traditional methods and recipes, but we need to have fun with it. Yes. Food is playful, so yes. it's, it's a must. What it does, it keeps the staff interested, it keeps the clients coming, and it's a very always unique perspective. So I always say yes. I'm in the business of that. Speaking of sophisticated fun, um, of course, the Met Gala, I understand you created quite the amenities. Can you share with us about that? 
and no matter what I do, no matter what approach it is, even if it's a dish, it has to have a meaning or a story. Yes. And the dish could be great, it could be tangible and tasty, but the story also assists. And sometimes chefs forget this, that mm. there should be something behind everything, a thought process. Mm -hmm. So with Mergala, literally dissecting Karl Lagerfeld's life, and he had to work for the houses of Fendi and Chanel, so he would do his sketches, but he would rip them up. He would never keep anything. So whatever is found, it was dug in the garbage. So the whole thing, the show being called a line of fashion, so I'm thinking, how can I incorporate this meaning into what it is? So line, clothesline, hanging his drawings up to dry, illuminated. I sort of did that where the, the edible prints of his drawings were edible chocolate. You could eat as little plaquettes. But one thing that, a little eccentric as Karl Lagerfeld was, the height and element of luxury to him was buttered toast. So part of the amenity I had, soft European butter with little uh, small square one inch one inch piece of toast with a buttered knife so you can butter yourself so every little nuance of the dish actually had a meaning for the megal itself and for Karl Lagerfeld. I also want to briefly talk about uh, the cuisine in the backdrop of the Taj because the Pierre New York is a Taj hotel and you have some Indian uh, fusion within the French. Having a good basis here with the history of the Taj mm -hmm. um, and the Pierre Hotel having the Indian restaurant, the Pierre Grill, we're actually doing a sort of a relaunch of this history element of the Pierre Grill and putting these recipes and flavors into our new dishes. Again, having the same concept of sophisticated fun, yes. which, w w which is my staple and everything yes. that, I, that, I, that I do here. <laughs> and uh, working closely with my uh, executive sous chef, Abhinav Sharma, He's very talented, he has a great palate, and he's from India. Mm -hmm. So working together with him, we're sort of reinventing what's already here. And I think now, you know, especially with um, society as a whole, if you look at James Beard, mm -hmm. their last couple of years, you've actually had nominees or winners that were Indian. Yeah. So, and you know, Manhattan is this big melting pot, right? You have all these cultures, and it's such a fantastic place to dine. You can literally, um, especially in Queens, you can, on one block, especially in Jackson Heights, yeah. you can literally hit 20 nations. So wow. where, where can you have this in, in anywhere else? You can't. Right. So because the, the, our, our customers and clients are, and modern mm -hmm. young people through Instagram, social media, they're willing to try new things. Yes. It actually makes this relaunch very relevant yes. for the whole culinary uh, entity of what we're doing. Hospitality, I always say, is in you. Mm. It's a gift that we have True. that we give to our clients and our customers and our and our guests and it's something that can be sharpened it's something that can be groomed but you have to have that giving sense in you and one thing that even though we're in a hotel and it's a people will you know pay for rooms and sleep at night it's a home yeah. so this is something that every employee from the top to the bottom has the same common language of this is our house that we're sharing with you. So as long as you have that mentality of everyone here, it's the best essence of hospitality is sharing your home. So this is something that Pierre does unequivocally very well and we've done since 1930 and we'll continue to do for another 100 years. Santiago is my most senior chef. He's been here since 1982. No, 81. 81, I'm sorry. Okay? So, for me, this is a representation of how this place is. So when I say a home, family, this is it. Okay? You have the same continuity of work, his hand. Literally have fed thousands and thousands of people. So this is my Okay? And he still smiles after that. And I started here in 1998 as executive pastry chef. And I've left and come back three times. So I must love this place, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so what is it about the Pierre in New York that you absolutely love? You know, it's the, not just the tangible building itself, but it's the, it's the people yes. and it's the brand. Yes. And I think this is timeless New York City luxury. So mm -hmm. being location, where it is, the history, the first chef being a Scoffier, and it's, it's yes. very big shoes to fill. Oh, so little right. details, you know, we, we don't expect the guests to notice. We just want them to have a wonderful time. Yeah. 
and ex have a wonderful meal, but we all know as professional that where it comes from and a lot of pride went into making it. Mm. We just hope the guests have fun. Well, I have been a guest many times <laughs> here at the Pierre New York Ataj yeah. Hotel, and I will continue to come back. Yeah. Wonderful place for celebrations, yeah. delicious celebrations, yeah. I might add. And now the new addition of this beautiful mm -hmm. museum. Thank you so much, Francois, you. for giving us a behind yeah. the scenes tour of the museum. You're welcome. And thank you for joining me today for the special edition of Kitchen Chat, a taste of luxury, history, and hospitality. For more information about the hotel, please visit thepierreny.com. And please visit me at kitchenchat.info. And always remember to take a moment and savor the day.